let us take a journey back into time, back thousands of millions of years to when the Earth was young. This is how it might have looked. Well, we're diving deep today. <laughs> Today's viewer requested video is, can we be spiritual and Christian at the same time? And first, let's take a step back and think, why are we even asking this in the first place? And now I'm not trying to call you out, you one viewer, but who's constricting you? Who's saying that you can or cannot be something in life? I'm certainly not doing that. I'm here to suggest certain things to be true, but let's reclaim the power that we all have within. Let's recognize and live from that feeling that we can be anything we want. We can do anything we want. Now, ideally, this action and these beliefs that we have are in harmony with ourselves and others, but they don't necessarily have to be preconceived from a time that was before us. But we'll get into that. First, let's start with the story. So believe it or not, I was born and raised a devout Christian, and that was not forced upon me at birth, but I went to my Sunday school, I went to church every weekend, and I read the Bible. I enjoyed every part of that, and I did it out of my own voluntary action. And that led me up until about the end of high school, and that's when I began expanding in terms of my physical growth as well as my intellectual curiosity. Now I wanted to learn more about the sciences and all that, but I also grew spiritually interested in more than just this one religion. And so I branched out. I began learning about Buddhism, Islam, Judaism, you name it. I pretty much surrounded myself with all these different core religious beliefs, trying to identify what is it that I truly vibe with. And lo and behold, the answer is not that clean cut. <laughs> and all throughout this time, I was surrounding myself with people, information, circumstances, and environments that aided in my ability to question reality. <laughs> what am I? What are you? What are we doing here? What is here? Why is there something and not nothing? <laughs> Questions like this were part of daily conversation, all for a joking, laughing matter, but there is a hint of seriousness to it all. Like Seriously, what are we? What is faith? What is religion? There's unanswerable questions, and whoever seemed to have an answer was condemned in my friend group because who are you to say there's an answer if you're one of us we're all human and ultimately this thought pattern could lead to some profitable direction or some disharmonious direction it really is up to you and your own unique experience but for me i was not truly satisfied with simply asking questions wandering in circles never really having any kind of answer and lo and behold the answer wasn't really what i was looking for in fact, it was some kind of actionable step that I can take, and that's what I vibed with religion in the first place for. They, it provided actionable steps, go to church, pray, be forgiven, etc. And this led you to heaven. And in my eyes, I wanted to live in the here and now. <laughs> yes, I valued the long-term future, but I wanted to take action and mold my life so that I can live in a heavenly state as of right now. And it is this that led me to pursue spirituality. But before I get into any of that, let me just state that there's truth in everything. But no matter what the religion, the belief, the person that's sharing their beliefs, <laughs> there is truth in everything. It's all about how you extract that truth, take away and filter any biases coming from that person or from yourself, and observe it and apply it in whatever way is applicable for you. So going back to the question, should I be or could I be? Christian and spiritual? Yes, <laughs> sure, why not? We as individuals that are humans at the end of the day should strive for diversified unification. <laughs> now, what do I mean by that? Well, we are all different, we're all unique, but there's still the underlying awareness that we all have to some degree or another. This is what ties us, that unifies us. However, our lived experience, our nature and nurture brings something new to the table that we share and help each other learn and grow from. So we should all live our own unique lives, whether we're Christian or Hindu or what have you, and we bring those lived experiences, the lessons learned, etc., to the table so that we can all collectively grow. Because who can argue against that? In fact, please argue against that. Leave me a comment below. I would love to have a conversation. I will conclude by saying, 
that we are all perfectly imperfect. <laughs> it's hard to argue against that. In fact, look all around. Everything is so imperfect that it's almost perfect. <laughs> and that is worth being appreciative of because it is what it is. Be weary of anything and anyone that tries to diminish the power and the sovereignty that you have within. And try to help others. Live harmonious with others, with yourself, with divine, whatever that is for you, and with evolution for your future generation's sake. And in doing so, we are intrinsically being respectful for others. We are encouraging the beliefs that are different from our own to thrive in others. And so that they can share lessons, they can share their insights, and hopefully share it with diminished amounts of bias. Try to live the life that you want to live, that you want others to live, <laughs> without forcing them. Thank you, thank you, thank you.